Where are you at? Is it early for you? Oh, no, it's late for me, actually. I'm in Italy. What? Yeah. Do you live there? I do for now, yeah. You do for now? For now. Yeah, I'll be coming back to the US at some point. But um, yeah, I'm in Italy. Are you working on a gig or are you just having fun? Uh, well, this week I'm having fun, but I am working on a gig. I'm, I'm editing Borderlands. So I have- Oh, a, in Italy. I, I, I'm, I'm in Italy, my editor's in LA, but we do it all remote now. So at a certain point, I'll go back to LA for, you know, probably fine tuning and temp mixing and stuff for previews. But it's, there's a new system, like base, it's basically like Zoom where you can hook it up to a large television and it's like you're in the room with your editor. So trying it out. I've spoken to a lot of filmmakers that have been using it over uh, the pandemic and been editing. It's been, it's crazy the stories I've heard. Yeah, everything, everything changed in the pandemic. I mean, making a movie in the pandemic is a whole, we'll do many more interviews about that at some point. Look, I, thank God I shot Finn before the pandemic because I never would have been able to film what I got before. Um, but we, we were cutting during the pandemic remotely. I mean, we had to, so. Yeah, uh, I have a lot of questions about Finn. Um, I want to ask a few things first, but I'm just going to start with Finn. That was a, it was a, first of all, congrats on the movie. Um, anything that can shine a light on this despicable trade is fantastic. And uh, I wanted to talk to you and help you promote this because of how strongly I feel that this is something that needs light on this very dark practice. Um, you know, just yeah, so- thank you. I mean, I, I, I know it's, it's also, it's a tough subject and it's hard to get people to care about sharks. And then they think, well, sharks want to eat us. Why do we need them? And when you see what's happening to them, you just, it's, it's unbelievable, especially when you realize that the fin literally has no taste. It actually is filled with bleach and neurotoxins. The meat has more than 30 times the allowable amount of mercury. It's like terrible, terrible for a human body. The cartilage pills that are sold at GNC and on Amazon inflame your joints and the shark liver oil that's used in cosmetics and makeup has a cheaper plant alternative. So there's literally no reason. And you're like, oh yeah, it's greed because people are getting rich off the death of sharks. And then people go, well, it's just China. And no, on the East Coast, every weekend, there's one this weekend, just Google monster shark fishing tournament. People are killing them. They go, well, it's just a couple of sharks. But the problem is it's 300 boats every weekend on the Atlantic. And they're, the only sharks they're taking out are the ones that are old enough to reproduce. So Basically, they don't stand a chance unless people just stop buying shark. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to ask you a question, which um, and maybe I could be completely wrong about this. But I listen, I love the movie Jaws. Love it. Think it's, love it. Love it. Movie's Favorite. phenomenal. Favorite. There's nothing Favorite. wrong with that movie. Perfection. But, and also it changed the summer blockbuster for Hollywood. It, like that movie is a significant part of, yeah. of Hollywood. But I also have to ask, do you think it's a little bit possible that that movie has also damaged people's perception of sharks because well, it you for know sure it did and peter benchley said if he knew we actually had this quote at the movie at some point if he knew the damage his book would have caused he never would have written it because benchley learned how wrong he was about shark like you watch the trailer it says it is a mindless eating killing machine people believed it they didn't know i mean so now it but the, that's not why they're being killed though it's too easy to blame jaws why they're being oh, no, I'm not blaming Jaws. I'm just but what I'm saying is it goes hand and people go, well, did Jaws hurt the perception? Of course, Jaws did. But part of the problem is that also the media fed into it because it's a great story for them. When someone gets hit by a shark, no one's going to do a story of a shark did nothing today. A shark sat in the water. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Ninety nine point. That's what they all what they're doing all the time. But that one time, you know, seven people a year in the world are getting bitten by sharks or you know, or there's seven people that die. There's more, you know, but more people are killed by armed toddlers. But the story is shark attack. They use the word shark attack. They're not attacking. They, they investigate with their mouths. They're biting and releasing. They're not eating us. The problem is that the fishing industry loves it. The fishing industry feeds the media because it sort of allows everyone to turn a blind eye to the fact that shark species since 2000, 2 billion sharks have been taken out of the water. And we don't know what our planet looks like. Like our kids are not gonna have sharks and they're gonna have algae blooms. And there's, I mean, they, they keep the ocean clean and the ocean makes half of our oxygen. And then you, when you see, it's like, wait, so that some rich organized, crim some criminals are getting rich off. The, is that why we're doing this? So restaurants can get rich off this, what? that these false, these health companies that are, it's a complete lie. The science about, oh, if you eat a shark, you won't get cancer. It's, it's nonsense. It's like, it's, of course sharks get cancer. And we, it was, so we show in the documentary how all of this, basically they'll go, well, go watch Jaws and then don't bother us. I think that one of the things in your documentary does talk about this 
is the fact that it, it's not, it's really not a black and white issue because the problem is you have people, let's just use part of your film in Mexico. You have people that are, you know, going after sharks to fit, you know, going after the fin, uh, killing sharks, because this is the easiest way for them to make a lot of money in a short period of time. So the problem is that you have all these communities that are, you know, uh, basically we need to find a way for these people to make a living without. Well, here's, here's the answer. Literally, there's two beaches. There's Cabo Pomo and directly next to it is Los Frailes. Now, Los Frailes is where we film. The adjacent beach, the one that borders it is protected. The entire village flipped to dive tourism and you go there and everyone's in ho nice houses with air conditioning and boats. Like the entire place exploded where all these surfers, all these divers, if you flip, they say that in the Bahamas, they're protected. A shark dead, one time use is worth about probably about $30. Oh, a shark alive over the course of its lifetime in the Bahamas, brings in $250,000 in dive tourism. So if you can help these villages, so that's what Reggie Domingo in the movie is doing in Los Frailes. We're like, how can we, there's a girl, shark girl, Madison, Madison Stewart. She goes to Indonesia going, guys, we get why you're doing this. They're going to be gone in 10 years, like really, really gone. But if we can flip to dive tourism, the same shark that you kill once for $20 can be worth $200,000 for your village. So we need I mean, there's got to be programs, there's got to be sponsors. I mean, look about, think of how much money we spend on defense and all these insane things. If we help these villages, that's why we can't vilify the fishermen. We have to get them on our side. You can't go, we have to go, look, 30 years ago, I get that why you, yes, you do a monster shark tournament. It's been going for 30 years, but whatever. 30 years ago, this wasn't a problem. Now it's a problem. So we all have to go, well, and I said to them, like, why wouldn't you just do a shark dive or shark tourism or take people out? If you charge people, bring them out on your boat, chum the waters, look at the sharks, put on a snorkel, jump in the water with them. You can do it. That's why, you know, there's a, the dive Rhode Island, Joe Romero's partner, they, they, the guy used to be a fisherman and he switched to dive tourism and it's, it's endless, it's evergreen. So that's what we need to do is we need to help people see that it's not just, oh, if you stop fishing, everyone will, you know, lose their shirts. No, if you can help, if we can find ways to educate and help the fishing villages that are killing them turn to dive tourism, so many people want to get in the water with them. Yeah, what, here's the thing that I think a lot of people always want to know. It's very, all, all these problems exist on the planet. And, uh, and again, I'm so happy that you're shining a light on this particular issue. But I think for everyone in like their everyday life, they always are wondering, how can I make a difference? What can I do today that can help this problem? So what do you, so what do you want to let people know? So easy. And this is what I wanted in the movie. I wanted solutions. I didn't want us to go, well, we're screwed. What are we going to do? First, while we were making the movie, the Shark Fin Sales Elimination Act passed the Senate and is now going to the House. So on finthemovie.com at the very top, I go, if you're in the US, push here. It's a letter. You can copy, paste it. There's no one petition button. You have to go to, there's a drop down menu. This is your rep. Type in your zip code. There's your rep and their email. And you paste the email and you write them going, please support the Shark Fin Sales Elimination Act. Everyone can do that easily and they can have five friends do the same thing. In the EU, we have one for a stop finning in the EU. That's a petition. They need a million signatures. They're about 236,000. Um, the other thing is that you can demand places be shark free. You can tweet to Amazon, go, please stop selling shark products. You can write to the makeup companies going, is your squalene shark liver? Why don't you get the plant alternative? Plant squalene is cheaper. Stop buying shark. You can go to GNC and go, why are you selling shark? If you're in Florida, go into the public super supermarket and go, what is this fish? What is Atlantic whitefish? What is, what is rockfish? What, do, it's, what is this non-specific fish? And when they say it's shark, go, why are you selling this? This is so poisonous. If people use their voice and their dollars, that's gonna, we've got to drive the price to zero. It's the twofold of having the politicians pass protection laws, but really, really what's going to stop it, it's like the whaling industry. You stop buying it. And we don't realize that all of the shark cartilage pills, all the shark liver oil, look for squalene in makeup, look for fish in supermarkets and just tweet, you know, hashtag shark free, demand that everything be shark free. Like we demanded, like, look, we protected orcas. They got SeaWorld, to, you know, they got the laws changed in California. 50 years ago, the whole world came together to protect whales. And I think it's just educating people and also being understanding. You know, I think that in this thing of like, we're going to ban your business and ruin you. I don't think that's the attitude that any of us can have. I think we all have to say, you know what, here we are. However we got here is how we got here. But we need the fishing industry. We need the health industry. 
challenge them, ask them to join our cause and, and take the pledge to make their products shark free. And by the way, Wild Aid has a whole bunch of programs. If you go on their website where you see that like Wild Aid and on Finn the Movie, we link to everybody. There's a lot of places, you know, FedEx is shipping shark fins or other places, the airlines that are shipping shark fins. So you can write to the airlines, go, please stop shipping it. So once we start, once people start getting vocal about not allowing the fins, not allowing the, car, the liver oil, not allowing the cartilage, not wearing shark jewelry, all of that stuff. Um, but really right now we have a moment to write to your rep and that's the best thing you can do. I'm not going to lie here. The movie's a tough watch. I can't, I, I have a very tough time watching animals, uh, um, be hurt, you know, being hurt. Was there any footage that you had that you're like, this is actually, I can't show this. This is, this is horrible. I mean, what I saw at that fishing tournament in Boston, in New Bedford, my, you know, Boston's where I grew up on my hometown where they allow the scientists from NOAA, the go government organization, they go, please come and take the samples of the sharks. And the NOAA people go, well, they're killing sharks anyways, we can get good samples and get good data. And then they go, see, we're doing this for science. Like they use, the NOAA scientists get used when I saw them scooping out the eyes and then the guy takes the saw, that's why I cut it to the cannibal, I put the cannibal Holocaust music in. So I was like, what else can you do except use that music? Like when else use it? They're hacking it off with a handsaw. I mean, there was stuff that it was just, it was so much. And it was actually, you know, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio was really helpful. He goes, Eli, he's like, look, I know you have the highest tolerance of devil of gore. He goes, we need it to be education and not like animal torture. And we need to show enough that people get the point but if you show just a little bit more, people are going to go, I can't finish the doc. And I, we want people to watch it to the end. So I think it has to be tough enough that it stays with you so that you want to do something, but not so strong. You're just like drained watching, you know, sharks get hacked up for 90 minutes. And that's, by the way, why the movie took so long to get was finding that balance in the editing. I mean, we had other, I mean, there's a whole section that Paul Hilton, the photographer shot in Surabaya in Indonesia, where there's just like, he's in this warehouse with just, just thousands of dead sharks and it just like we had it but we thought how is this more powerful it's not different enough from liberia or mexico or new bedford or anything else we shot we just couldn't you know we just couldn't use it but it, it did get to be too much I mean, it's very very different for me as a director watching this stuff for years and years it was was really difficult and it never got easier but i just kept saying this has to be out there if there's one i, I just want that one record that for the rest of my life the rest of our lives, people can point to and go, you know what that thing about, you? just watch this movie, you'll understand it. And then hopefully one day the film becomes irrelevant. If I've really done my job, the movie becomes like a work of science fiction one day. People go, whoa, we used to do that? That's the goal of the movie. Is for yeah, it, to be like, what the hell is this? Yeah, the thing about it is that uh, I, it's so unfortunate that people are so short-sighted on so many issues, whether it be climate change, sharks, overfishing, the list goes on and on. And it really comes down to, I don't want to say greed, sometimes it's survival, but it's just, we have to, as a planet, do so much better about thinking five steps ahead over what we're just doing this year. You know, it's, it's also so this idea that, that you can do all these things in honor of tradition. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, think of all the horrible things that have happened over the last 250 years that were traditions for a long time that we don't do anymore. Um, you know, we used to hunt lions. And I mean, the people were like sold to slaves. Like, like, like there's, there's so many moments where the human beings have to go, wait, wait, this is, this is insane. What are we doing? And then you look back and go, how could they do this? How was this a thing? Um, and, you know, I think we have to do that with sharks. I think we have, like, when you look back at whale hunting and, you know, New Bedford was a whaling town and now they're killing sharks without any irony. I'm like, do you guys realize that your, your entire industry in this town was whaling? And you flipped and you stopped killing whales and the town thrived still and life went on and everyone's fine. Like our lives will be fine if without killing, we don't have to kill sharks to have a happy, fulfilled life. Like we can be perfectly fine. In fact, we're much better if we stop killing sharks. The problem is that if, if we're really, we're not supposed to interact with sharks. We're never supposed to see them. Sharks aren't supposed to see us. We're not supposed to see them. So yeah, you can go in the ocean, but most of the time, every time, it's like, think of all the times you've been to the beach. Have you ever seen a shark? Most people say no. Well, sharks have seen you. They're there the entire time, but you know, they they don't want anything to do with us. So it's not like more of them will make the waters more dangerous. In fact, it'll create biodiversity and keep the oceans healthy. Um, and you know, we owe it to our children. We owe it to our children to say, what the hell are we doing? We've gotten it so wrong. We are the Jaws generation and we owe it to the future generations to make this the tipping point when people stop making sharks the villain and start protecting them. 
They sharks do not have vocal cords. We are the only ones that can be vocal cords for sharks. As tough as it was to watch Finn, I'm so thankful you made it. Anything that can shine a light, as I said, on this horrible practice, uh, I'm happy to help promote it on Collider. Thank you. Please have people link to you know finthemovie.com so they go here to help to help oh. contact the reps. That's what we. By the way, the movie is if if people don't take action and take the five minutes to write the rep the movie's worthless. Like I really like, I mean, I believe the movie has value, but I really think if, if we don't do something, the movie was made as a tool for everyone to do something. And if people don't take action, then there's sort of no point. I really appreciate you making the movie. Good luck with everything you're doing. And I look forward to seeing Borderlands in a year. I look, I look forward to us uh, having a full on discussion about it too. 100%. Hey, listen, have a great day, man. Thanks buddy. Bye.